Good morning, cheap cooks. Now, we are getting into the day of the life of a chief cook. But before we get into that, let's go over a few things first before I go into details about the day in the life of a chief cook. So, before you can even become a chief cook, before you can even upgrade at Piney Point, because that's the only way you're going to be able to become a chief cook on SIU Vessels, is doing the upgrading classes at the Paul Hall Center. Nine times out of ten, your instructor will be Chef John. He's an awesome guy. Uh, before the pandemic, the classes were, I believe, uh, three months. Yes, my class, my class before the pandemic was three months. When the COVID hit, the pandemic took place. They narrowed down the classes down to five weeks. Um, Chief Cook classes are always available, as you see. Uh, you can always go on the website to seafarers.org, and I'll drop the website in the description box, so you can just click on it and see what's going on for the next few months, or probably to the end of the year, because that's how advanced that they have the schedule. Um, it should be no problem getting into the class, However, there are a few things that you need to make sure that you have completed already. Um, now, one, you will have to have your manager serve safe. This is completely different from your basic uh, serve safe certificate, okay? Um, now, recently I have been on a website and they they, it seems like they are offering the classes. When I was doing my cheap cook class, uh, we were the last class that was able to uh, get the manager serve safe classes in the chief cook program. So recently, this is something you always want to stay up to date on because things can change drastic, drastically, you know? So <clears throat> go to the website, always read, to see what is actually going on and what you need in order to attend the class. Uh, because when you contact admissions and when you send your uh, application over uh, via email, um, they will definitely get back in contact with you to let you know uh, if you're missing anything. So, you will need to serve safe manager class. Uh, this video, March, by the time this post is going to be like the end of March or, or you know a few days uh, before the end, the year 2022. So whenever you're watching this, it could be completely different. So just stay up to date on them things. But I'll take a screenshot or a brief recording to show you uh, what's going on right now. The pop a squat for you guys, but uh, yeah. So <laughs> make sure you have the Surf Safe Manager. Uh, if you're not able to, and the website is saying you will have the, the, the surf safe manager is very intense. I'm not going to hold you. Um, <laughs> make sure you study your material. Okay. It's very intense. <laughs> very, very, very intense. But uh, if, you, if you study and comprehend the information and make it stick, you should be fine. Okay. Um, you will need your surf cert you will need that certificate before even enrolling in the class. So what it seems like the school is offering it a week before the chief class, a week before the chief cook classes start. What it seems like. <clears throat> I could be right, I could be wrong. So just always double check. Um, if you guys are able to get the class at Potty Point, that's great. If not, don't sweat it. It's very easy wherever you're located at, wherever you're living at right now, just, just Google or Facebook or whatever someone that's uh, giving the classes. Usually you will pay a few bucks for it. They get you in and out. It's worth it. So just make sure you have that. Secondly, um, because I did go through the apprenticeship program, uh, the stored only program, my training was only seven weeks. 
So after that seven weeks, I had to sell SA 240 days in order to upgrade to Cheap Cook and plus in order to get my B book. So again, that's why the last SA video I told you guys, don't be selling SA more than two years. If it's something that you just enjoy and you don't like the responsibility of a cheap cook or a cheap steward, then cool, I understand. Some people, you know, they just want to go with the flow of things and, you know, they don't want to take on that responsibility. They don't want that much pressure on them. They don't want to take on the responsibility. So I get it, you feel me? But uh, if you ask after the pesos, after the dineros, upgrade, baby. Okay, upgrade. So. Anyway, before I get off the track, <laughs> so after doing that, we had to sell in order to upgrade to cheap cook around the time that I did. We had to sell stored assistant SA 240 days just in order to apply for the cheap cook classes. Um, 240 days, you can either do 120 on two vessels or the same vessel if you want to knock it all out or go back to the same vessel if you're able to then knock your other 120 out like that now i don't i will have to do some reading to see exactly what's going on now as far as the requirements for the cheap cook class um the ship is always loud so excuse the background noise Hopefully I'm speaking loudly and clearly for you guys to hear me. Um, but uh, anyway, I'll double check that. So I'm gonna be giving y'all false information, but you will need to sell a certain amount of days in order to upgrade the cheap cook. Now for the ones that's always contacting me or commenting about phase one, phase two, listen, I have no knowledge on any phases. I went through the stored only program. 2017 my training was only seven weeks i didn't have to come back for phase two or phase three phase five i ain't had to do none of that crap that's time consuming so this is what i'm saying guys if you're an sa if you join in the program not even an sa if you about to join the program and you're trying to figure out if you're trying to go galley or whatnot you need to make up your mind quickly because a lot of times 80% of the times while you're at the apprentice school, um, they could pull a few of you guys out just for the stored only program. You just never Amazing. know, you won't know until you get there. I have a friend, um, she's from the cruise ship line, and hopefully we can get a video together. She's probably watching this right now, and that's my, that's my road dog, man. But uh, she's coming from the cruise ship line, and she's already completed her uh, program right now she's just waiting on her clearance to come and to get her ship so i say that to say she went into the program uh thinking that she was going to have to do each department and she was able to get pulled into the to the to the galley uh department only so hey it might work out it might not work out in your favor but if so you should be uh, deciding what department you want to do very quickly because you just never know the opportunities that might take place for you to accomplish those things very, you know, effectively. You can learn what to do and you can learn what not to do. I gotta check my baby. I had to pop the squat so I could sit. when you bring the whole meal together it's a lovely thing so anyway to get back what I was talking about you know so you get your start date for the class you do your class you complete your class 
get your certificate, you're excited, you're nervous, you're scared, you don't know what to expect, don't worry, I got you. This video is going into great details about exactly what it is you're going to be doing, how you're going to be doing it, and trust me, man, stick with me. Hey, and if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button, man. Like the video, please drop a comment. I really appreciate all the support and the love, man. I hope y'all loving these videos because I love doing them for you guys. Uh, also, I'm probably the only one on YouTube right now that's actually talking about the galley department. So, yes, when you when you finish your classes, don't wait. Don't be nervous. Don't be scared. Don't let fear get in the way. Trust me, you got this. You got this big doll. Okay? Listen, go to, go, go to the hall at the school. Go talk to Mario. Go talk to somebody at the Union Hall at school so you, they can get you shipped out immediately as a chief cook. The sooner you jump into it, the better. The sooner you just jump into the job and start doing what you need to do, the better it's going to be. The more peace of mind you're going to have because you're actually about to jump into it and you're not waiting like, oh my God, I need to wait till I get better at this or get better at that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Don't think like that. Trust me, you got this, okay? You got it. To my chief cook, you on your first vessel, I'm gonna tell you this right now. You are the life of this vessel. What they say? You wanna get to a man heart, you get in his stomach. Now I know you ain't trying to get in people hearts like that, but you want to because you, you have a very important role, okay? We transport the cargo, okay? These guys are working in all type of conditions, situations. The engine room is hot. People can be having a bad pissy day. Uh, the, the deck hands, deck guys, deck girls are working on deck in all types of weather, hot, cold, snow, rain, sleet. Oh, man. Duh awesome thing about being a chief cook is that when people come and sit down in these mess halls and have a warm hot meal and that's really good and nutritious it does something to the spirit man it does something to the spirit it makes you feel good it makes you want to work it gives you energy you're excited to work throughout your day you literally have all the morale in your hands when you're cooking this food for the crew Food can either make or break the crew. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. They will let you know, trust me, they will let you know when you're doing good, and they will let you know when it's not going so good as far as your food. You need to work on your food game, okay? Now, I'm not gonna lie, Pining Point is not about recipes as far as telling, showing you, and teaching you recipes and seasoning. Piney Point is all about techniques on cooking, methods of cooking. You take out this, if I show you this big piece of beef or pork, chicken breast, seafood, they, what are you going to do with it? You know what to do with it. You know how to clean it and properly break it down. You know how to remove the silver skin safely. So Piney Point is pretty much showing you the techniques and methods of cooking these dishes and meats. And now, you know, for example, right along. This log of ground beef is pretty easy for a lot of people. Tacos, Taco Tuesday, all types of things. But as a chief cook, you got to know know your meats because a lot of times you might not have a good steward and they're just going to take the meat out the meat box or have you take your own. All right, chief cooks, this is just a video slide. I'm going to be getting a little talking then. So um, every day you're going to be cooking a soup, a vegetable. So you want to get you want to get as much prepping done as you can when you get in in the a.m. You know, after lunch, you don't want to be prepping anything. You just want to have your mindset on getting the meal done on time. So, um, again, time management and prepping is a, is a big thing 
working in a galley, guys, you don't want to be left behind, um, especially when it comes to your soups. Now, your soups, if you don't, you might got pre-made soups, you might don't. But if you don't, every, you know, just think beforehand what, what kind of soups you want to make, you know? It's not that difficult. Also, you might have a Taco Tuesday or a Burger Day. You want to get all, all your little ingredients out for the crew, such as your tomatoes, your lettuce, your onions. And, um, you know, for steak day, again, just write down your temperatures if you don't know them off the back of your hand. Get your digital thermometer so um, everybody's steak night can be decent. And they like their steaks how they like it. So, good luck. Management is the biggest thing while you're on these vessels cooking. Okay, that's something, honestly, that's something Pony Point is not going to teach you. Uh, you you'll see once you do your classes, you're not going to have time to measure in this, measure in that. You're not going to have an hour to be measuring the whole recipe. Okay, uh, like I said in the essay video, as a chief cook, you want to do the same thing. You want to make it your duty, take accountability in your work and yourself, and get up. An hour early if you need to come into the galley 30 40 minutes early or an hour early to get situated get your mind right and organized on what you need to be doing and completing that day um what, what you need to be doing because the last thing you want to happen is that you get you get caught up you get left behind no telling what's going on that day it might be drills at the last second it might be a, a safety meeting at 10 o'clock <laughs> 1300 and you like, damn, I need 30, some of this food don't, you know, it take about 30, 20, depending on what it is. Your, job's, your job is very straightforward. You're going to be doing lunch and dinner. And as I said in the essay video, the steward assistant don't have to worry about the inside the galley. But you do, this is your home. You want to keep it clean. You want to keep it sanitized. You want to keep all the cleaning products away from the food. You just want to work very safely so uh, you won't hurt or harm yourself so you won't get sick so the crew won't get sick um, and so you can just take care of the vessel man you don't want any fires to break out uh, while you're underway you just want to work safely because the boat can be rocky sometimes I'll talk to you guys first as I always like to do to put you up on game on a few things you know um, you're very important on the vessel man so as i was saying this cargo can't move uh, unless you feed these people decent i mean this ain't roof chris this ain't your favorite five star steakhouse but you you know at least care about what you're doing if you care that's going to go a long way you can't make everybody happy don't try to make everybody happy you can trust me um just do the best that you can actually care about what you're doing that that's going to says a lot you know uh, look presentable, look clean, shave, take care of your hygiene. Now the awesome thing about becoming a chief cook is always jobs available at the hall. So that that's, I mean, the store department is always jobs available. And cooks, they need you, bruh. They need you. So all you men, all you ladies that like to cook and love to cook and thinking about cooking on these vessels, come on in. We need you. They need you. You know, and if you if you actually care about what you're doing and love what you enjoy, I like that because it's like, hey, we get to work together and we, we just doing the damn thing, you know. So the crew appreciate that. You know, your only job is to cook. You're not out working in the sun. You're working the, by the fan, the AC. you just doing your own thing, having a good old time, man. So all you need to focus on is cooking that's it that's all hey guys i hope that video was very helpful for you guys uh of course if you're watching my videos i appreciate it if you guys engage with me like the video that means a lot so more people can see it um comment on the video um if you have any questions or concerns or you just want to give it two thumbs up whatever i appreciate it all if you didn't like the video if i talk too much if i need to do this more or you know i appreciate everything um um, you know, subscribe to the channel, man. Hit that bell so you can get notified when the next video get posted, of course. Uh, pretty much, I touched up on the video, man. At first, before editing, the video was damn near 45 to an hour minutes long. So I cut out a lot of, a lot of, a lot of um, information. 
um, just me rambling on about certain things always give me y'all uh, my personal opinion on a lot of these situations and uh I'm sorry y'all I just got off of work super tired but um you know uh, just rambling off about uh my, my personal opinions on a few things and uh you know just giving y'all game on a lot of stuff but I, I cut a lot of it out because um unfortunately a lot of people got <laughs> they can't pay attention too long so I'm just trying to get to the meat and the potato and so right here I got right with me a few questions you guys been asking me uh that's been coming on my Instagram uh been meeting some of you guys in the Facebook groups and guys uh every description that I have on my videos you should be plugged in and reading them because I'm plugging you guys into what you need to know and where you need to be to get certain information so if you go in my description box you're going to see me posting links of facebook groups that you should be tagged in uh very important uh we have a lot of facebook groups that are uh, for specifically women uh, and specifically for all sellers so plug in plug into that information man uh hit that bell subscribe to the video if you're not it's a lot of you guys watching but not subscribing obviously you're liking the content so if you can give me that favor bless us you dig what i'm saying let's jump right into it here go a few questions right, that so got. the question number one Stu, do i need culinary training in order to cook absolutely not absolutely not guys again like i said before you couldn't get me to fry egg before i was doing this so now i'm like me deep in this shit, cooking my ass off so um just to get to the point you do not need culinary training now to to get to the uh people that do have a culinary degree which is another question um you guys is a specific program for you all it's called ccap now i don't know much information about it you might need to contact admissions and i'll put all the contact information in the description box all right so look out for that um contact emissions and talk to someone to see um, how you can get involved with the CCAP program. This is for people with uh, ex-military training, ex-Navy that's coming from the service that have uh, culinary degrees. You can join the CCAP program or guys that went to culinary school. You can join this program. Um, to, my, to the best of my knowledge, they uh, assess you on what you know and um, you're training not even that long. You can get on the ship immediately. Um, not immediately, but you know what I'm saying. You know more quicker than the other students. Um, so guys, pay close attention to that. Um, contact them for more information though, especially for the CCAP program. Uh, for the people that, that don't have any culinary training and you wanna get on these ships and you're thinking about joining the store department, thinking about upgrading chief cook and you're kind of like mm, listen you're gonna be all right just jump into it do what you gotta do you're gonna be just fine trust me all right next question how many people do i usually cook for that's a great question it all depends on the vessel uh right now again i'm on a atb including me it's only 11 so i have been on ships my first um chief cook job which turned into a store job it was damn near 50 people on there it was a tago ship military uh that's a lot of people dog so i mean you just never know all right uh the range it off i'll say a lot of times you might be cooking for a crew like uh 20 to no more than 35 unless it's a big old big ass msc ship uh, and some and on them bigger ships that have like so many people usually is a position you'll see positions on the board like first cook second cook third cook um, I never took one of them positions but I would love to just to you know kick back and learn some shit and uh, touch up on some things all right but um yeah there's jobs out there like that so you know just keep an eye out on that too um menu okay so this is wasn't a question it's just something my uh I wanted to talk about to the chief cooks um because i didn't get into it uh with the video i was dragging along but just to cut it short chief cooks your chief steward is responsible for giving you your weekly menu now me how i operate i'm not expecting my store to uh take out food the day before like no if we're working together and you're my chief steward i would like my 
menu a week in advance or at least three days in advance. Uh, that's for me to do the proper uh, planning and execute the menu how they see fit. So um, chief cooks, don't be afraid. You need to communicate with your steward on the menu and um, just inform them, you know, uh, usually they'll, they, they're pretty good with giving you your menu uh, in advance. You won't get it at the last minute, but you do have assholes. So just an FYI, okay? All right, now speaking of the menu, a lot of times on the ships we have burger days. So you might go and have a burger day as you see in the, uh, the photos and the video that you just seen in that. Um, you wanna be prepping your tomatoes, lettuce and onions and stuff like that. You might got a Taco Tuesday day. You want to prep your onions and again tomatoes and etc. Um, always looking forward to a steak night. It's steak nights pretty much every week. Uh, that's just how some ships get down. That's majority of USA vessels. You definitely gonna have a steak night. So you need to know your steaks. If you're not good with that, buy a thermometer. Uh, my everything is packed up right now, but buy a thermometer. Uh, the one that helped me out a lot is the digital one on Amazon. Uh, the digital ones, they read much quicker, all right? You get a you get a temp in pretty much two seconds, probably less than two seconds, all right? You want to take notes, man. And this jumps into the next thing I jotted down for you guys. Because a lot of these ships don't have Wi-Fi, and some of them do, and even if they do, it's running a little slow. So what you need to do is take take notes man before you get before you get to your vessel take notes get a notebook get a pen get a pad um go paper invest in a little cheap notebook at the dollar tree and because you don't know what you're about to jump into what you get into on these vessels if you haven't hopped in one of the facebook groups and see if they have wi-fi just a proper plan and just to be on your A game, you want to do your research before you get to the ship. You want to be looking up recipes, okay? You want to be writing down your temperature times, what you need to know, uh, because sometimes you just might not have service at all. Okay, I've been on the vessel, the 50 people one. No internet service, we're in that water 30, 40 days. So you want to also invest in a cookbook. Um, Got two good ones for one cookbook that I absolutely enjoy. This is not mine's. It's uh, one of the cooks that I'm on a vessel right now. It's so good, man. It's some real country cooking going down up in this baby right here, okay? So just take a few um, dollars and invest in the cookbook. A lot of good cookbooks. Uh, you can Google it, research it. I know the Better Homes Gardens. That's That that was my first one. It's a thick book like that. And it's, it's small, but it's thick. You know, so that helps me out a lot um, if you don't feel like writing things down. Um, also, a lot of things that you'll be working with, for example, you know, sometimes you might be in a foreign um, country. They don't have certain sauces. They don't have like teriyaki sauce or um, sweet and sour sauce. Guys, you want to write your own recipes down on how to make these things because um yeah it, it comes in handy you want to know how to make a teriyaki sauce you want to know how to make this in case you don't have that you know you want to know how to uh, substitute things and and just get it done you know so that helps me out a whole lot as well um speaking on that yeah write your recipes down before you even get there uh because of the service you just again guys you just might not know what you're getting yourself into so you just want to be a, ahead of the game and some a lot of times your chief steward uh they look down on chief cooks that that, that don't bring that aprons that don't bring that a basic knife set uh cookbook writing material pens like if you know you're an adult now man you're at work so you just want to just bringing a pen and a, and, a, and a marker and a highlighter means a lot, you know. So you want to show your story that you're capable of holding down your holding down your own and doing and getting the job done. And um, and if they see people that's uh that's really doing good and they're trying their best, like they're going to work with, they would love to work with you because they see you're able to um, get it done, you know. Um, and if you don't bring your knife set or your aprons or uh, just a basic cookbook they just looking at you like 
you taking this thing for a game, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Now, if you got a little skin in the game and you're familiar with cooking in general, you probably don't need a cookbook, you know? So, every, everything is everything. But um, also, touching bases on the equipment. A lot of you guys, um, you will be upgrading that piney point with amazing equipment. The oven works nice. The fry is frying good, okay? <laughs> you have everything that you need right there. It's like a commercial kitchen. And then a lot of you guys coming from the culinary school. Oh, man, don't even get me started on that equipment. That equipment is like, man, it's like top chef, top quality, okay? So then you get on some of these vessels and the oven is fucked up. <laughs> You don't got no steam table, so now you gotta fucking well, heat your food up in the oven and place it. Ah, oh, it's just anytime I step foot on the ship, I'm like, all right, bro, what don't work? Let me know now. Anyway, guys, look, that was that video. I hope everything was very informative for you guys. And when you leave for your vessel, make sure you pack it surf safe and make sure you pack your certified chief cook certificate. Some captains, uh, some vessels you go on, they will be very anal about that, especially if your union hall didn't send it off. And this big, you're gonna get a thick freaking package with a bunch of information on it. Um, they're gonna be very anal about that. So just uh, make copies of it if you can, uh, scan it, on your on your notes make it turn it to a pdf so sometimes the captain you can email it to the captain once you get on the vessel which is great so that's just a little fyi other than that it's been great man the next video certified chief steward let's get it all the chief cooks i got a quick video to show you how to clean the grill uh i'm gonna do a quick video right here and then i'm gonna show you how to clean the grill and what you can use to get it nice and sparkly. So I'm gonna show you how we do it now, and you're gonna watch me while I do it. All right, so somebody showed me this, so I'm gonna show you, hopefully it'll help you out. So just go and take on something, put the water in, make sure you grab your, your cleaning stuff that you scrub it down with. Make sure you got the ventilation on, make sure you have the fan on. I'm gonna turn it on before I pour it because uh, the smell, man, it's, it's not for the weak. <laughs> It can make you a little, it can get all up in your nostrils and it's not a good sight. I'm pretty used to it, but uh, you might also want to tell whoever close by, you know, your store or your SA, they might want to get out the galley when it's go down. So I went on here and dilute it with a little bit of water. I don't need much. I don't want to use too much either because with too much water is going to come down into the drain and I just cleaned it out. I just wanted enough so I can scrub it. I'll do the rest by hand. Um, if your grill is too hot, you might want to let it cool down first. You want a little heat to it so um, everything can activate nice. Um, what else? Use safety gloves if you have them. I don't have them. I'm pretty used to it. So, you know, I just I just work smart and carefully. So uh, you want to take your lime juice and vinegar. White vinegar or apple cider vinegar. It don't matter. Uh, I have a shitload of white vinegar, so that's what I'm using. That's what I always use. And uh, just go ahead on and pour some in. Ain't no measurements. You don't need a lot either, depending on the size of your grill. Um, put that up. The vinegar, the same thing. The stuff is, vinegar is already funky. I love it though. I love it in my um, Filipino dishes. The dishes that call for it. And I, love, I love the taste of vinegar. I smell so much. So I'm just going ahead and get at a little twirl. I'm going to go ahead on and put my fan on. It's going to be loud, but I want you guys to see the before and after. Thank you.